I previously mentioned to you that the reason why Section 20A exists is because SARS does not want to have a situation where you are carrying on some sort of trade that is just continuously and forever going to be making losses. Then they don't want to have you just knocking those losses off. That's why they want you to ring fence it. A company that will make losses forever and always will nat naturally be closed down by its shareholders. That's why it's not the same issue there. And also companies can't set it off against necessary other income. Right, but natural persons, guys, it will be ring-fenced if those previous requirements apply, which is if you're a natural person, you're being taxed at the maximum marginal rate, and you've either made a loss in three out of the last five years, or you're carrying on a suspect trade, then it's immediate. But now, what I want you to understand here is that if you can prove to SARS that there's a reasonable prospect of making a taxable income, then the loss will not be ring-fenced. This is something that you have to prove to SARS. Now, what they, what they mean by that is, so let's say it is the following has happened. Year one, you made a loss, 100,000. Year two, you made a loss, 200,000. You made some profits. And then you made a loss again. Right, so you've made a loss in one, two, three out of the last five years. So now they want to ring fence that. If you can now go to SARS and you can prove to them, listen, year six is going to be a problem and year seven is going to be a problem, for example. But year eight, you're going to make money. If you can prove to SARS at some point in the future, it's going to have a re there's going to be a tax for income. So you can't say 50 years from now. It obviously has to be reasonable. SARS has to accept it. But then they will say, okay, it's fine. We'll allow you to claim it as a deduction. Now, Section 20A3 gives us some examples on how to apply this. So this is the, some of the things that you can prove to SARS. It says, provisions of subsection 1 do not apply in respect of an assessed loss incurred by a person during any year of assessment from carrying on any trade contemplated in subsection 2A, the 3 out of 5 year rule, or B, suspect trade, where the trade constitutes a business in respect of which, here we go, there is a reasonable prospect of deriving taxable income within a reasonable period. With having special regard to, here they go, the proportion of gross income in relation to the amount of allowable deductions in that year. Right, so your gross income was 100,000 rands and your deductions are... 10 million rands. That potentially is a problem for SARS. They're going to say, whoa, are you going to be able to turn that around? How are you going to do that? Right? But your gross income is 100,000 rands and your deductions are 120,000 rands. That looks a lot more reasonable. Right. There's no specific rule here. Again, you have to prove it to SARS overall. So this is an area where you could integrate management accounting, basically. The level of activities carried on by the person or the amount of expense incurred by that person in respect of advertising, promoting, or selling in the carrying on of their trade. You say you've got this business, but you're not advertising it anyway. You're not spending money on advertising. You're not doing anything. How do you expect it to turn around? Sorry. Or, yes, this business, but of that deductions in there, 80,000 of that is spent on advertising. You're trying to market it. So I also say, okay, cool. We can see you're trying to market it. Again, you're trying to prove... If you, so the idea here is, remember again, so as a, a suspect trade, I used an example of me covering myself when I'm naked. I like carrying myself in paint and then selling those paintings. If I never try and sell it, then how can I say I'm carrying on a business? But if I'm actively going to flea markets and art galleries and putting things on the internet, then so I'll say, look, this, this person is really trying. Okay. They will look if that trade is carried on in a commercial manner. So they'll look at how many full-time employees do you have? What is the commercial setting of the premises? Is the equipment used exclusively for the purpose of carrying on trade? How much time do you spend at the premises conducting that business? So I've got a little business. I've got a full-time receptionist that I've hired. The business is set in, um, in a shopping center. I've got computers and laptops in there which are only used for business. And I'm there every day, three, four hours a day while I'm trying to set this business up. 
That looks reasonable, guys. That looks like a person that's carrying on a business. But if I don't have any people working for me, my commercial setting is actually my backyard because that's where I like to roll around and paint. The equipment used, is it used exclusively for carrying on this? No. My computer, which I try and sell it with, I also use to play games on. Right? And what time do I spend there? What only time is necessary for me to do those things? Maybe that's not a real business. The number of years in which assessed losses were incurred in relation to the period from the date when that person commenced carrying on trading. Taking into account any unexpected events that gave rise to assessed losses and the nature of the business involved. Okay, so they say, you started in year one, we're now in year 11, and you've made losses in nine years. That's a lot of losses. So how long have you had it? But now they say, let's look at the unexpected events. Okay, you're a farmer. And the first eight years, there was a severe drought. Right, same year over the nature of the business involved. Sometimes it some businesses take long to start making money. Maybe my art career, it'll take a number of years before I'm a renowned in the art space and I can make money. Things that you have to prove to yourself. Okay, if you have a business where you say, okay, cool, I'm selling cigarettes, for example. They don't expect you 10 years to set that business up. That's something that you have to be able to do quickly. Right, what are the business plans? And then they say, what extent is the asset used in that trade available for use by that person or relative for recreational purposes or personal consumption? So I've got a boat. Here's a dam, and I've got a little boat. Right, which I go around and around in this dam. But I also rent it out to people. Income, 100,000 rands. Deductions, 300,000 rands. Okay, made a 200,000 rands loss. How often can I use this boat? Oh, I use it basically four times a week. That's a problem. Right. Potentially a problem. Because salesmen can say, listen, actually, are you sure that this is a business? Or are you not just saying that you actually want to own a boat? And now he's trying to claim those boat expenses. They're saying it's carrying on a business. Because if you're trying to run a business, why are you using it so much for recreational purposes? Why are you not renting it out more? Right, guys. So these are all things that you have to consider. And the question that will have to give you some sort of indication, maybe there's calculations, there will be some sort of indication, but these are all things that you'll have to be able to discuss as it happens. Right. Very simple for a chartered accountant. So, guys... Important, this applies to 2A, 3 out of 5, and the suspect trade rule. But now we get to a special rule, the 6 out of 10 year rule, section 20A4. This is only for suspect trades. This section says, okay, year, let me show you, year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so apologies that it's the same amount. It's just a little bit easier as illustration. Okay, you are carrying on a suspect trade. You make a loss in year one. Now immediately it should be ring fenced, but you are able to prove to SARS in terms of section 20A3, you are able to prove that there's a reasonable prospect of a taxable income. So SARS says, okay, cool. So they allow you to claim it. Make a 200,000 rands gain. Next year, I have 100,000 rands loss. Now, every time you make this, you have to go through this process. Now, I have to go through it again. Suspect law trade? Yes, but I've got a reasonable prospect. So, what I want you to understand is, let's say you can keep on proving to SARS that you're going to make a profit. You can see every time it goes, the next year it has one. So, it's, you know it's reasonable, that's what I'm trying to say. So, you are able to prove to SARS the whole time, it's fine. When it gets to this situation where you've now made one, two, three, four, five, six losses. The moment that happens, then even if you can prove to SARS that you've made 
there's a reasonable prospect of making profit, it will be ring fenced. So basically, this is a rule that says, and this only applies to suspect trades. If you've made the last six out of the last ten years, it's ring fenced done. We don't care anymore. If this was not a suspect trade, okay, if this was not a suspect trade, let's quickly talk about that. So if this was the three out of five year rule, the first time you would consider Section 20A is in year 5, where you've made a loss in 1, 2, 3 out of the last 5 years. Now, at that point in time, you prove that you're able to carry it on. Okay, so it's cool. So now you can have to consider it in year 7 again. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've made a loss in 1, 2, 3 out of the last 5 years. So I have to consider it again. And I'm still able to prove it to SARS. Right? Then, the next time I make it is over here. I've made a loss in 1, uh, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, in 3 out of the last 5 years, so I should consider it again. It's fine. I proved this off, I, uh, I'm going to make a profit, they allow me to do it, and so forth. I want you to understand, that's 3 out of 5 year rule. There's nothing that applies. This 6 out of 10 year rule does not apply there. It only applies to suspect trades. Alright guys, so that's basically it for section 20A. Um, please note, but this should be logic to you, you need to consider this separately for each of the trades that you carry on. So if you earn a salary and you've got trade A and you've got trade B, year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Trade A is a suspect trade. Trade B is the 3 out of 5 year trade. You will consider this one separately and that one separately, right, from each other. It applies separate rules. Every time that you make a loss, you'll have to consider it. All right, that's it for section 20A, guys. An interesting section. And the one thing I just wanted to point out to you, which is quite interesting, I always find about this, is that this only applies to natural persons who are in the maximum marginal tax bracket. So above 1.5 million rands. A couple of years ago, there was not, there wasn't the tax record wasn't that high. It was only the 41 percent, and then that was the maximum tax bracket. So this is interesting. If you earn 1.2 million rands, you can go and play golf and practice sport. As long as you can prove that it's in the production of income, you can claim the expenses. It's not a suspect trade fee because we don't even consider this section for you. But it's only the moment that you get into the 1.5 million rands. Now the reason for this is basically because the idea there is that it's usually the very wealthy people who are probably incurring all sorts of expenses for their hobbies and can maybe try and hide these things. That's the idea there and those are the ones they're trying to penalize. Okay, that's it guys for section 20A. Interesting section. Um, be sure to study the theory well.